Uh, the fact that we like posting the Ten Commandments, not even posting, arguing about posting the Ten Commandments in public schools and courthouses tells me personally, and I share this humbly, that we've missed the point of the Ten Commandments in the first place. Who, who did God give these commandments to? Israel. And then by extension, the church. After having established a relationship with us, after having saved us from our slavery, he gives us his law. He did not give these laws to America. He cer certainly did not give these laws to the U.S. government or to the judicial branch. He gave them to us. And for us to insist on posting and displaying the Ten Commandments in public places would be like me printing up copies of my Herndon rules, marching into all of my neighbors' houses, slapping them on the refrigerators, and saying, these are my rules, now they're yours. Remember, flush. <laughs> if you were one of my neighbors, how would you react? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, my house, my rules. And then they would ask this, Who are you anyway? I don't even know you. I mean, people don't pay attention to rule... Then they would call the cops. <laughs> people don't pay attention to rules given to them by someone they don't no, wasn't this the battle cry of the American Revolution? No taxation without representation. We don't know you, you don't know us, you don't represent us, we're not going to pay your taxes. This is why God did not give the Ten Commandments to the Israelites before, before he saved them from their slavery. He got to know them first. He proved his deity to them. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Then he gave them the law. And it's why posting the Ten Commandments in public schools misses the point. The public doesn't recognize the divine lawgiver. They haven't been saved by the lawgiver. Giving them the law is getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, if we want to show the world God, here's a radical idea, okay, radical notion, just think about it. I came up with this by myself. Okay, if we want to show the world the glory of God and the glory of God's law, why don't we live it? Instead of arguing about posting it. Especially when we don't even know it. So we're going to study the Ten Commandments this fall at the rooftop because we don't know it. We should know them. And we think we know them. And we're going to start this morning with the first commandment here in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to read the introduction again to you to get a running start here, and then the first command is pretty short. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Now, when I first read this law, I actually wondered if God says he doesn't want us to have any other gods before him, does that mean we can have gods after him? I mean, you guys are kind of like shaking your heads like, no, but like, that's what it says. We have no other gods before me. Well, does that mean we can have some gods after him? Like money, God, me? Have a God's I mean, I'll promise God he'll be my first. My first God, my big G God. Can I have some other, other gods? I'm just a loophole guy, <laughs> looking for loopholes. Get to know the verse a little bit, and you actually find out that a literal rendition of this is that we should have no other, no other gods in his presence before me. No other gods in my presence. Now, where's God's presence? Everywhere. So what's the command? No other gods. In this first commandment, God is demanding the exclusive worship and devotion of his people and is promising to be worth it. And this is a big deal in the ancient world. In the ancient world, people tended to worship many gods. 
I mean, in our culture, uh, we all just kind of talk in generic deistic terms to God. It's kind of this bland monotheism. Well, at least it's monotheism. But in the ancient world, they had a different God for every single need. If you needed to get pregnant, who did you sacrifice to? Fertility gods. Needed to win your war, who did you pray to? War gods. Yeah, if you needed rain, if you knew what you're doing, you prayed to the weather gods. But to the Israelites, God said, only me. No sun gods, no fertility gods, no war gods, just me. And this isn't just that you can't have any other gods. This is a promise. Why would they need them? Not just the limitation. You know, no other gods. You, I'm, I want to be your one-stop divine shop. I mean, I'm quite competent to handle any and every single one of your needs. I've spent uh, much of the past few days contemplating this commandment. That Psalm 1 that I read earlier, it says, Blessed is the man who meditates on the law day and night. The, privil- the great privilege of being a preacher is that I'm forced to do that on a weekly basis. So I spent this past week meditating on this command day and night. Again, something I've never done. Never done. I mean, the first com- I've never even meditated on the first commandment. So this week I got to do that. I don't live in Egypt or go to pagan deities to meet the specific needs of my life. I don't worship Baal or Moloch or Ra or Gozer, the Gozerian. But I do have... <laughs> Thank you for your laughter. I was really nervous. That, by the way, is the, the goddess from where? Ghostbusters. Okay, now that we're all on the same page. I don't have... I don't worship Gozer, the Gozerian. But I do have other gods. Uh, J.I. Packer, a biblical theologian, calls a god anything that we let run our life. That's what a God is. Anything we let run our life. Anything beyond ourselves or even including ourselves that we let dictate where we go, who we become, what we do. Now, of course, this includes goes to the Gozeria and other pagan deities that we may or may not serve. But it also includes activities, ideas, people, family members, philosophies, etc. Anything is capable of running us. And it's why Paul talks in 1 Corinthians 8 about these so-called gods in heaven and on earth. Indeed, there are many. And I love, I love that Paul's like using quotation marks. Indeed, there are many gods and many lords. There are many so-called gods and lords that I let run my life sometimes without even knowing it. I've had the opportunity this week to be reminded of what those gods and lords are. What are my gods? Here they are. What do I let dictate my behavior and attitudes? For starters, opinion. The opinions of others. I am a slave to the opinions of others. I want them to like me, to regard me. I want them to be impressed. I want them to think I'm cool, smart, creative, hardworking, healthy, funny, relaxed. I know this is a God. It controls me way too much. It's one thing to want to be respected uh, by others, but it's another thing entirely to be so obsessed with their opinions that I adjust who I am and what I think to suit their expectations. Well, here's another God I worship. Time. More specifically, whose time? My time. Time is the most valuable thing in the world to me. I hate wasting time. I hate that I don't have more time. I hate sleep because it just feels so wasteful. There's so many other things I'd like to be doing with my time. In fact, uh, if I could have a superpower, I would be like no sleep man. (laughs) Other people would, you know, I would would fly (laughs) or I would... I don't know, what would, Jeff, what would your superpower be? Walk through walls? Sure, right. I would be no sleep boy. Because I, then I could have so much more time. To, there's so many things I want to do with my, with my life. I mean, if I could buy more time, if I could sell my soul for more time, I would entertain the offer. Uh, I multitask all the time to make better use of my time. I use my cell phone while driving. I don't text while driving. 
but I text at stoplights. Which is just stupid, but I, I, I reassure myself. But, you know, I'm not moving, but other people are moving quite fast around me. And even when I'm talking on my cell phone, I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this. This is, this is really stupid. I mean, I can see, but... And, and also, you know, that stupid lady over there who's talking on her cell phone, she needs to get off, but this is an important conversation. <laughs> you ever done that? They need to get off the cell phone, but this is an important phone call. Uh, also, if someone interrupts me, I find myself incredibly irritated because it's, it's like interrupting my worship of the time gods. Uh, this week I got sick, for example. I hate getting sick. Why do I hate getting sick? It slows me down. I mean, I had, on Thursday, I had to take a nap, which is like the, the worst use of time and I got sleep the night before, but apparently I didn't get enough, and now I'm sick, and so I've got to take a nap, and I'm just like lying there, feeling guilty, trying to nap. It was the most unrefreshing nap I've ever had in my life. What other gods do I worship? Success. The success gods. I've always wanted to succeed. Uh, I've wanted to accomplish and achieve. I was the kid in high school who had all the awards and led all the groups. Student body president, did I ever tell you that? I did. Oh, you saw it? Oh, yeah, Carla, you, you were there, right? So you can confirm this. It's true. <laughs> did you doubt it, though? Uh, FCA president, NHS vice president, prom king. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Somebody said something funny. It was kind of about me, but I don't know what it was. Funny thing about being prom king is it's actually just a backup to the homecoming king, which is done in the fall and prom king's in the spring, so I was really excited to be prom king. I felt like it was a personal failure of mine. Because I was prom king, not homecoming. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, but I knew I wanted it to be big, I wanted to be in charge, and even when I went to work for the church... Uh, I worked for my own sense of ego as much as I did God's call. I wanted to build a big, successful, rapidly growing church, not just because the world needs another one of those, which I believe, but because I worship the success God, and that's what the success God desires. Those are my gods. I don't have statues or anything, but I have them. I have more, too. Uh, the past.